Hello guys, hello guys. I hope everyone is doing great. Um, this is Dr. T and welcome to Clinical Medicine with Dr. T. Um, yes, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of this. And um, thank you for liking and sharing. Let's keep sharing guys. Let's keep liking and commenting. Um, let's grow the channel. Um, I'm happy that I'm getting so much uh, positive feedback from doctors, um, interns, registrars, medical officers, students. Um, thank you for your messages. Um, thank you for encouraging me. I'm really humbled, guys. I'm really, I'm really, really, really humbled. Um, thank you so much. So it brings a lot of joy to my heart to hear someone say, actually your videos are helping me a lot are really really helping me a lot they are making it easy for me to study they are making it easy for me to understand um that's what i want that's what i want and guys for those who don't know this is not about money this is not about money i know people are saying people are even they've already started asking me about how much are you gonna get what i don't even know how the payment from youtube works and at this point i really don't care about it uh, this is not about money it's my passion to share information to teach and like i said i've been doing this even um during my day <laughs> guys even from high school i have been explaining things to people from high school um adversity i was doing it uh, actually there's a doctor who sent me a message saying that you know when we we're doing peds in up you helped us a lot with peds and all of that and all of that and um what you are doing is is what you really should be doing and i've been waiting for you to start um sharing um information teaching people so guys thank you so much thank you so much today i want us to quickly talk about lfts approach to lfts approach to lfts um i know most of you have seen that I think it was my second video when I did approach to FBC. So we're going to do the same thing with LFTs now. So how do you approach LFTs? This is a way that works for me. This is a way that I feel it's less complicated. And I've never struggled to interpret an LFT because of this approach that I use. And I want to share it with you. So what I normally do when I look at a patient's LFTs, obviously... Maybe the patient was jaundiced and then we took LFTs and na 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 na. So now the LFTs are in front of us. What do we do with that? So I normally break my approach down like this. So I will look at bilirubin and then the enzymes. While I'm still at it, guys, the LFT, LFT. It's a misnomer. These <laughs> bilirubin and enzymes, um, their levels, they say they don't say anything about the functional aspect of the of the, of the of the liver. But what they do, they tell us about biliary drainage and liver injury. The things that tell us about the function or the functionality of the liver is albumin albumin pt inr so those are the three things and others obviously but albumin is the most common one so so what i normally do i i, I normally look at the enzymes first and say okay what is happening and remember enzymes can be broken down into two you've got your your transaminases Nases, and you've got your cholestatic enzymes cholestatic enzymes as we know it's alp ggt here it's alt ast and if we can try and be correct um try to be very correct in what we say a true um liver transaminase is the alt it's more specific than the ast ast can be secret 
or is secreted by muscles like skeletal muscles, cardiomyocytes, and other things. And also this site, ALP is a true, not that it's only secreted by the, uh, by the, by the um, biliary tree only, but it's more specific compared to GGT. So if I were to choose one test to tell me about the biliary drainage, I would do an ALP. If I were to pick a one test that tells me about liver or, or hepatocyte injury, I would do an ALT. So I look at my enzymes and say, which ones of these are high? Is it the transaminases or is it the cholestatic enzymes? Obviously, if it's this, then I know that I'm dealing with a, an obstructive jaundice or an obstruction in the biliary tree. And if you've got an obstruction in the biliary tree, your, your bilirubin will go up because it's not getting to the uh, uh, gallbladder and to the, to, the, to the GI. So if these are high, it means I've got hepatic injury. But I don't know what is the cause of the hepatic injury, but I just know that I've got hepatic injury. So, hepatic injury can be caused by different things. So, what we can do, we can look at the differentials now of hepatic injury. So, we can look at hepatitis. Hepatitis. Causes of hepatitis, it can be viral. Like hepatitis A, B, C, E, and D, depending where you are. And um, drug-induced. Drug-induced hepatitis. Obviously, for this, you will need to do your viral panel and your... Yeah. Your viral panel. And then... That's hepatitis. So our hepatic injury, what is causing this ALT to be secreted, to be secret, uh, or to be excreted so much, or to be released so much from our hepatocytes? That's what we want to know. All we know is that we've got hepatic injury because our ALT and AST are high, and especially the ALT. So we want to know what is the cause. So if you can find, if you do the bloods for, let's say you find hepatitis B, then you know that, okay, I've got this because of hepatitis B. And then you can also have an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. And uh, there are so many of them, which means when the blood that you're going to take, the, the test that you will take to differentiate wh uh, which one you are having would be your anti-Smith, your, your um, anti-nuclear antibodies, your... Um, your ANA, your, your um, smooth muscle antibodies, that type of a thing. So that's autoimmune diseases. And then you can talk about metabolic causes, metabolic diseases. Um, the most common ones that will always pop up when you search them is your hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis your Gilbert's disease, Gilbert's disease, your alpha-1 antitrypsin antibodies. So basically with hemochromatosis, you've got an overload of iron in the body. So your body is absorbing a lot of iron from your diet, but is not able to, to excrete the excess. So that iron builds up in the body and start depositing itself in the bone, I mean, in the liver, in the brain, in the kidneys, and all of that. So you get that. And also with Gilbert's disease, you've got same principle. You've got a lot of copper. This one is iron. Iron. Here you've got copper. You've got a lot of copper in your body, and it's just de de um, depositing itself in different organs now. Other would be your non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, also, um, would also have, let me, you'll also have things like, um, your congestive hepatopathy. You know, when someone has got severe portal hypertension, then they start having jaundice. 
congestive hepatopathy and um, I'm sure I'm missing a few things which is fine I think I will make a different video where we're gonna exhaust this and exhaust this and exhaust that um, but now we're just it's a snapshot so this side let's say now we have these okay let me talk about you know when you when you interpret an ALP an ALP is it has got different sources as well it can be from the bone it can be from the placenta um yeah so if it's from if it's from if it's liver or biliary tree related then you must have a high ggt and a high alp if those two are high then you can say it's a biliary biliary tree problem but if you've got an isolated alp and everything else is normal here think about bone so start investigating investigating that patient for bone malignancy or um, uh, things like um osteopenic uh, disorders like bone weakening disorders um and also make sure the patient is not pregnant because one of the sources of, of alp is placenta and then um so so having an isolated alp that's what you must check an isolated gg GGT can be from drugs that induces the enzyme and also alcohol. But for alcohol, you should have a high GGT and also you must also have one of these high. Because remember, alcohol is toxic to the hepatocytes too. So you should also have a high GGT plus uh, an increase in these. Um, and they say... Um, when it's alcohol when 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 the cause is alcohol here then the ratio of alt to ast should be more than two but with other conditions it's less than two so so now if you say you've got both of these high then now that's when we can say okay we've got cholestasis but cholestasis can be intrahepatic and extrahepatic so we are going to talk about these and that's where now this is what they call a uh, surgical jaundice this is what they call a medical jaundice so this patient will be jaundice right so this is what is called, they call medical jaundice this is what's called a uh, surgical jaundice um not unless you pick them up in their early phase of the, the disease so but to make things simple yeah let's just keep it that way so it can either be intra intrahepatic or extrahepatic and it's important to talk about this because that's where you're going to talk about surgical uh, causes there like your cholangial carcinomas your head of the pancreas cancer your um, uh, what other causes gallstones cholecholithiasis and uh, that type of thing and also it's so very important to talk about acute cholangitis there because if you've got a patient who's got jaundice and it's obstructive um the jaundice will not kill them but acute cholangitis will kill them so how do you quickly make sure because it's like when you present to a surgeon when you say that a patient has got obstructive jaundice the next thing that they want to hear they want to know does the patient have features of acute cholangitis because if they have that patient becomes an emergency you can they cannot tell you to wait for next week or to wait for that month to, for, for for you to send the patient acute cholangitis that the obstruction needs to be to be released so that the the the, the, the draining can um can ensue okay so and also you will need to resource that patient because they might be in shock and all of that and all of that and all of that so that's that so I hope you guys are going to um, do the same way I do. LFT, look at this guy. And when you look at this guy, decide who is more predominantly high. Because you can have this high and this high. But what matters, which one is more predominantly high? Because you can have obstruction and develop and have this high. And then because of the obstruction that has been prolonged, you start now having... Uh, stasis that ends up 
now you end up you end up having bil, um, bilirubin in the liver and then the hepatocytes they start now also to be damaged because of that so you want to know which one is predominantly high then you decide if you've got this is high but this one is slightly high then this one is the main problem so address the the, the main problem um so coming to bilirubin the same thing look at is it unconjugated is it conjugated is it conjugated the way i normally make life simple for myself i always have a, this picture in my mind that i've got i've got a hepatocyte and then this is post hepatic this is intrahepatic then this is prehepatic when you talk about unconjugated it would be your prehepatic problems so it can be an increased uh, production production it could be a, a decreased uptake by the cells by the hepatocytes themselves or it's a um, an impaired conjugation meaning the the enzyme that actually um uh, that actually um converts unconjugated to be conjugated is the one that is malfunctioning and then there are causes for that there are causes for that there are causes for that one of the one one of the common drugs that causes a decreased uptake is is rifampicin and also with an increased uh, production you can have inherited or acquired with inherited like one of the acquired is hemolytic um, hemolytic uh, uremic syndrome one of the causes for inherited would be your your abnormal cells, sickle cell, thalassemia, um, sideroblastic anemia. So how do we diagnose those? You do a peripheral smear, you do your reticulocyte count. Um, like guys, I said I don't want to be extensive here, just, it's just a snapshot. Um, so, uh, and then also once you have conjugated and then you've got this then you can be sure because so you can be able to that's why i like looking at these because these they sort of like follow what is happening this side most of the times so if you can get this right and then you come here at least having a picture that okay i think this is what is happening um so guys that's an approach to uh, lft i hope that will help um so like i said we are going to talk about this extensively talk about this when we, this would be like surgery and then this would be like um, um, um internal medicine this is more of your hematology but hematology and internal medicine because they come to internal medicine before they go to hematology in any case so um because we need to find the diagnosis and refer uh, them appropriately so I hope that will help guys see you on my next um, tutorial um, bye 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 and bye